Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. It is Wednesday, the 17th of June. Alan Ruffin and Tam McManus are here with me. We're delighted to have your company, as ever, across Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, and on PLZ Soccer's Twitter account as well. So thank you to each and every one of you uh, for joining us and uh, all the messages of support. And, of course, uh, we always get uh, lots of messages from fans uh, near and far. So we're delighted that you could join us. Thank Thank you very much for that. Uh, lots to talk about, of course. UEFA have revealed their plans for the uh, finalising the Europa League and the Champions League for this season, and uh, then obviously what's going to happen next season for the European competition. So we'll discuss that. We'll discuss the SPFL's battle with, uh, of course, the broadcasters to see how much money they're going to have to pay them for the premature end to the season. We will hear from David Winnie, who's a former St Mirren player and, of course, he is now a lawyer, sports law in London. So some interesting stuff from uh, David on the mess that we have here over the last three months in Scotland. Of course, he was part of the St Mirren Scottish Cup winning side of 1987. So that's what's in store for us. Thank you very much for joining us. Great to see you guys. And I think the general message, Ruffy, is if you really get a bad haircut, sooner or later you just keep battering at it until it starts to look respectable. And I think that's what's happening with Tam at the moment. Yeah. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a complete remodeling job. Uh, oh. uh, he's obviously he's obviously had the, the handbook, at, the, the hairdressing handbook, just and seen what kind of styles he was going to... Oh, it's looking a lot better. Look, yeah, oh, uh, it is now. looking a lot better. The only thing I have to say, <sighs> but obviously for legal reasons, Tom, has someone come in to try and save the day or did you let your wife back at it? <laughs> <laughs> my auntie done it in her back garden <laughs> uh, so, so, so it's your distance and with the clippers so I mean as you can see it's now looking a million dollars so I'm quite happy with it. I, I had to get something done I, I, my missus butchered it so I had to get something done with it. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, let's not forget, everyone, that the current rate of exchange, a million dollars, is £2.50 in East Kilbride money. So that's fair. And I think that's a fair assessment of how his auntie has rectified the situation. I love the way, I love the way he tried to cover his tail there, Ruffy, saying uh, social distancing as well. <laughs> Meaning his auntie was over there, clipping, clipping from the afar. garden shears. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What 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 district what district is it you stay in? He's got bride. He's got a bad garden. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that's what we've got in store. Um, I just want to start off on a positive note, and I think it's a great thing to mention, but Hearts and Partick Thistle fans donating to uh, Shunrar's uh, campaign for Donate a Season Ticket. I mean, I think that's just heartwarming, to say the least, Tom. Yeah, brilliant. Um, listen, clubs have, a lot of clubs have came together. A lot of clubs have always lacked in self-interest, but, you know, that's a great gesture from both Hearts and Partick Thistle. Shunrar are obviously in a bad situation. You know, they've been relegated uh, in the League 2 and they're going to be struggling for money as well. So, great gesture from Hearts, Partick, Thistle and Stranraer, I suppose, are in this together anyway. You know, they've all been kind of hard done by with the relegation. So, it's great that they're at least um, giving them a couple of bob. Yeah, nice little touch there. Um, and a uh, big hi to uh, Willie Gibson, who's in uh, Dreek Elgin, apparently, at the moment. Chris Maxwell, great to have you on board. Mark Fitzpatrick as well from Costa Rica. I don't think I've mentioned Costa Rica before, Rafi, have I? No, we haven't had that. The only time we've mentioned Costa Rica is when we talk about the Scotland game and the World Cup. But no, we haven't had anybody for there mm. at all. Yeah, we genuinely yep. have people who are expats who are t talking to us, Tom, from places where countries have battered us before. Everywhere. Is it for Kazakhstan? Is that, that, that must be next. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, t yeah. I tell you what, I tell you what, this, this PL said roadshow could, uh, could go global. All well, these places, you've got the, the people tuning in, so it'd be great to go and visit all these places and do a wee show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're in lockdown trying to survive. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, Andrew Portis, I think it is, is just, and I've just lost the thread of it there, but basically he's wondering, Tom, if you're going to apologise, um, obviously with your criticism of Hearts, uh, when they went early on the uh, cutting off certain wages and suddenly across the city, Hibs are doing the same and there could be people heading out the door. No, I'm not going to apologise. Um, I think yeah. it's totally different. I think Hearts pushed the button a week after the season finished because 
of the, the massive wage bill. I think they went in two footed, fifty percent wage cuts, and were threatening people with getting the sack. Hibs have tried to do the right thing. They've tried to look after their staff and their players. Listen, nobody knew in the, in the third week in March we're going to know have any fans for the whole year. So I'm not apologising at all. I think it's yeah. totally different. I think Hearts, you know, Anne Budge is not some sort of medical visionary who's seen down the line that, you know, we'd go a full year without fans in the stadium in the third week in March. Not a chance. If you still, if you believe that, you believe in the tooth fairy. So, no, I'm not apologising. I think Hibs tried to do the right thing. Two, two or three months down the line, listen, if clubs are going to be cutting wages, I, I understand it, but not a week after the season finished. So, not apologising to Hearts at all. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, think, um, to be... I was going to say, I was going to say, I think for apart from all the younger members who watch the show, there is a tooth fairy, Tom. Believe me, cost you a pound every time. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say to you, Tom, Tom, Tom. Sorry. Tom, yeah. Let's let's not uh, let's not blow some kids, uh, you know, fantasies and and, and dreams uh, out of the water. Uh, I have to say, I remember actually Hugh Keevans, my great friend, uh, when we worked on Radio Clyde, and who and announced there was no Santa and had to give a full scale apology. Life went mental, and that's just exactly what reminded me of it. There. Well done, Ruffy, for for covering our tale. Uh, Donny's in Bahrain. He says, I don't think I don't think Bahrain have beaten us yet. Calm yourself, Donny. There's still time. They could gub us too. It's because we've not played by. them yet. Uh, that's a very good point, Tom. <laughs> exactly. Uh, hi to George Mullen, Gary McGurn, Liz Clark as well joins us. Freddie Young, Sean Russell. Um, and and again, Sean Russell's... Three or four people have picked up in this, Tom. And, and I, I think there's just... Again, we're guilty of at times rewriting history or forgetting how it all unfolded. Sean Russell's talking about the the fact and, and wondering about if we all want to backtrack on the fact that Rangers have mentioned in their dossier that um, you know the SPFL would be having to pay money back to the broadcasters because this is the this is the battle that's going on at the moment. You know they're determining how much money they're going to have to pay back to BT Sport, probably around about two point three million in stages across the sky, um, and BBC will get money back as well, Tom. So I think the general feeling from the Rangers fans who are who are on. The messenger on Facebook as well too is, and on YouTube, it, it, it's as if we've missed that point out. What's your take on it? I know exactly what the facts are, but I'm I'm curious to see what you you think on this. They they are saying Rangers have been proved 100% correct on this. I don't think they've been proved 100% correct, Peter. Um, I think they had a point. You know that that was obviously one of the main things that we all spoke about at the time, and we did speak about that the money that the, the SPFL would maybe have to pay back, but. I don't see what the other option was. We were never going to finish the season. And you've got a lot of people now saying that, oh, we should have waited, you know, we could have finished the season, look at England and different things. I don't think there was a possibility of us finishing the season here um, at all. I think that nobody could have foreseen us, you know, going through the stages of getting out of lockdown. You know, a lot of people have behaved themselves and been sensible, but I think we've come, going to come out quicker than, than most anticipated. But you couldn't see that. You couldn't see that in the third week, third or fourth week uh, in March. So... Although Rangers did have a point in the dossier, I wouldn't say we start gloating and saying they were 100% correct. I think if Rangers were stronger and, and had more evidence in that dossier, then you might they might have get they might have get Neil Doncaster removed, but they just didn't have that. As we've spoke about it before, that kind of silver bullet. Yeah, um, James Thompson says Peter Ron Gordon has come out and said we must now focus on our first team to deliver success on the pitch with players being asked to take wage cuts. We might uh, not have much of a team left, says James. Well, we're going to talk about that as well, James, I, I guarantee you. Um, but Ruffy, just backing up what Tam said there, and the reason why I'm looking at it, I remember specifically because in the last three months you had to make sure you were on the case with everything. When that dossier came out, I, I did mention at the time, Rangers made some very very good, valid yeah. points. One of them, though, on the television aspect of it, Ruffy, was something that we had highlighted prior to that. I mean, Tam's going on about the fact that some people are saying we could have waited, we couldn't have waited. It's just a nonsense to suggest we could have waited because we're only just getting players back into training now. But uh, with regards to the broadcast deal, everybody knew there was going to be repercussions. The English, the German, the French, the Spanish, they were all desperately trying to get games played 
and finish the season because they knew they were into it for millions with the broadcast companies. So they were under real pressure, whereas Scotland, in, in a sense, we knew it was coming. I think the other point that Rangers you know, were right to highlight in the dossier was it maybe should have been highlighted to all the clubs. Listen, if this situation uh, of the season not being finished and everybody voting to end the season materialises, we'll have to pay the broadcasters back and it could be a, 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 you know, a healthy amount of money. But I think the general feeling from Neil Doncaster when he came on is he said that, you know, that would have been abundantly clear to all. Yeah, well, I think again, you know, I think it's one of the mistakes that the SPFL board have maybe admitted to that there have been mistakes done along the road. I think this is one of them not being up front uh, and, and letting everybody know exactly what kind of money the, 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 the league was going to get hit with. You know, it is a large sum of money. And uh, I, I just feel there's, the, I mean, we've moved on from it now, but I just think there are so many things happened the way back then that uh, if we delved into it a bit more, we might have found out a bit more. But let's move on. Well, let's move on and, and deal with where we are just now. Yeah, John Strzelecki says we need to move on. And interestingly enough, where Hearts and Partick Thistle are just now is what we'll be discussing with David Winnie, who's our special guest. He's a former St Mirren Player Cup winner with them, but now a sports lawyer in London. And uh, I think, you know, at one point in the interview, he discusses Hearts and Partick Thistle's case, which is very interesting. And we'll hear that very shortly. Um, OK, let's switch our attention at the moment to UEFA, who've come out in the last couple of hours with their grand plan of finishing the Europa League and of course the Champions League in Euro 2020. Quarterfinals, semi-finals and the final will be played as a knockout tournament in Germany. All of these ties will be single leg fixtures. The outstanding last 16 ties to be played on August 5th or 6th um, ties where the first leg was postponed will be played as a single leg. Now that doesn't, uh, that doesn't um, affect Rangers because their second leg uh, will take place against Bayer Leverkusen, the 3-1 down from the first leg. We're waiting on the venue that's to be determined in Germany. So that could be, um, if my memory serves me correct, Cologne, Duisburg, Dusseldorf or Gelsenkirchen. Uh, Champions League quarterfinals, semifinals and final to be played in Lisbon between August 12th to the 23rd. It's a knockout tournament with no second legs. Outstanding Champions League ties <coughs> will be played on the 7th and the 8th of August. And the other key point here, which we're all hanging on, is Euro 2020. Scotland will face Israel in the playoff semi-final on October 8th and the potential final against Norway or Serbia is November the 12th. So finally we know where we're going towards the end of the season, Rafi. Yeah, it's good news. To, I mean, they're the same as everybody else. They've got obligations uh, to honour uh, in their contracts with their competitions. It's uh, it's good to get it all. Uh, we all want to see the football getting played. We all want to see finals getting played. Uh, let, let's just hope that the, the two two week quarantines sort of are finished by then. Yeah, and over and above that, um, Glasgow City, their quarterfinal tie in the women's game will be against Wolfsburg in Spain on the 21st or the 22nd of August. And with the conclusion of the Europa League and the Champions League, uh, the new tournament, which will kick off and obviously will interest Rangers, Motherwell, Aberdeen and Celtic, uh, the Celtic Champions League qualification is 18th, 19th of August. Uh, and I think that's going to be a one-leg affair as the playoff. Um, and then Motherwell Aberdeen, a uh, one-off match, first round qualifying in the Europa League on the 27th of August. And Jers in the second round qualifying come in on the 17th of September. And there'll be a one-leg playoff. Uh, well, there's, a, there's a, a bit of cutthroat, Tom, because it used to be in the old days you know, that, that uh, you know, home and away, and then you were out. There wasn't any group stages, but uh, this one here is even more cutthroat. It's just one leg. Peter, and maybe no suit to others. Um, you know, if you're getting a big club away from home um, and it's in front of no fans, closed doors, it would probably give you an advantage. You know, if you have to go to a, like a cauldron, like a, like a Red Star Belgrade or something like that, you know, and there's fans, the great atmosphere, and it's a really difficult place to go and play. And I think that applies to Scotland as well. If we, play, if we beat Israel and, uh, and, and Serbia beat Norway, we had to go to Serbia and there was no fans there. But surely that would be to our advantage. You know, but to likes of Celtic and Rangers, not having that crowd behind them at home in the European ties would obviously be a disadvantage. So it'll be interesting to see how it all works out. 
I'm quite happy with it. I like, yeah. I like the idea. I like the idea of a one one off game. What when are you out? When are you go home? Um, you know, the Americans do that, and it's very exciting. So, you know, I'm 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 looking forward to it. Yeah, um, Andy Carr uh, comes on and says, "Geez, Tam Rangers said it. Doncaster said absolutely no. Check the SPFL press release at the time. Lowell called it rubbish. So spare us the soft soap. Be honest for once and stop false reporting and rewriting history. And the move on cry only buries the incompetence and allows it to continue. Do you really want to be party to that? Well, Andy, I'm afraid to say, um, if you look back at the Neil Doncaster interview on this uh, channel, you will see quite simply that." The accusation was that should they have actually highlighted a number of issues, one of them being the fact that they may well have to go into negotiations. And Neil Doncaster did not duck that issue. So there are a number of Rangers fans are rewriting history on this as well. I, I think the one thing that wasn't clear, Ruffy, was the extent of what the SPFL would have to pay back because nobody could determine that because they're still negotiating at the moment, crossing the T's and dotting the I's. <clears throat> Yeah, I think we were all led to believe it was going to be a very, very large sum of money, you know, which obviously we didn't didn't want anybody to be on the end of that. So I, I think some people just wanted to know. Ten million was it? Was it of, yeah, it was ten yeah. million, and yeah, now yeah. I think we're led to believe it's what one and a half or something like that. Uh, no, 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 so no, no. It's two point three million. It's, it's heading to two point three million yeah. for for BT. It's heading over a million, and it's been staggered for uh, Sky. There's money yeah. going to go back to uh, the BBC as well. It could stretch up to about six or seven million, and then of course there's the overall costs that are going to come if the SPFL suddenly find themselves in court with Hearts and Thistle, and if there was compensation. Uh, towards Hearts or Partick Thistle, which is obviously, I think, the end result that you're hoping for, um, that could take it up past ten million as a as a bill before we before we get to a situation where, you know, we're banking the the, the sky money. So that's that's the figures we're looking at here, just to be exact on it. But I, I don't know about you, Robbie. I was well aware that there was going to be financial implications mm -hmm. for the uh, SPFL. I don't I don't know anybody who is looking for a modicum of, uh, you know, criticism or a hook here to get Neil Doncaster. Um, you know, Neil Doncaster and the SPFL have made mistakes and we've been heavily critical of them on it, but none have materialised, Ruffy, that would have cemented a call for his suspension in Rod McKenzie's no. because of any impropriety. No, I think everybody knew that uh, BT were going to claim some money back, you know, with the, the shortage of games. They weren't just going to say, you know, right, oh, we'll forget about that. Thanks very much for the relationship. That's going to happen. And particularly when we're swapping for BT to Sky, you know, that's another reason why they wouldn't let you off with any money uh, because you'd moved on to somebody else. So, you know, I, I think it, it, it was there. But we just didn't know the exact figure for it. Uh, and I, I would like to think the board knew as well what, what they were going to get hit with. Yeah, um, so it, it's, uh, it's, it's again over this three months and I think, you know, the, the longer it goes on, Tam, I think people will again just start to, to make up things in their head, things that did happen and didn't happen. Yeah, they, they believe what they want to, want to believe and they'll, they'll to, to get their side of the story over, they'll try and, you know, wangle the facts, uh, so he speaks. But listen, no, nobody's happy with this situation. I mean, if obviously Hearts and Party Thistle are well within their rights to go and go all the way on this. You know, they've, they've been really affected by it. They're going to lose a lot of money and they'll go, they'll go to the courts and they're, they're, I think they're well within their rights and right to do that. The only thing that worries me amongst it all is, you know, the season getting delayed even further, you know, to our back playing football and the clubs, you know, you look at Hibs just now as well. I think there will be other clubs that will follow who really, really close to, to go and bust and I think that if you delay it any longer you know and there's more money coming off the, the SPFL have got to pay out more money you know which is basically the clubs it's, it's going to be a real real problem for everyone yeah I can tell you that uh, obviously there's a bit of good news in there um, they have confirmed that Glasgow will be a host city for Euro 2020 which is of course going to be played uh, next year on the 11th of June to the 11th of July four games uh, roughly three Group D matches will be played in Scotland and one last 16 match so 
Scottish fans mixing in. Hopefully, hopefully Scottish fans <laughs> watching Scotland, but <laughs> Scottish fans at least watching somebody play uh, European Championship football. Yeah, yeah, I think we were all anticipating it this year. I think we were all getting a bit excited uh, about the the formation of it and what teams we were going to get because it's it's great for. For particularly the kids, you know, in the game, we can go to these games and see these big players up front. Uh, and I think if we had done particularly well, I think that the Friday night game was against England uh, down in Wembley. So that was something to look forward to as well. But uh, let's just hope we qualify first. Yep. Um, John McDonnell on YouTube says, everybody knew there would be BT financial penalties long before the Rangers dossier. Uh, and Jack M says, our league should have been finished. Absolutely no reason why it couldn't have been. Um, well, uh, Jack, I think we've explained exactly and we are at this moment waiting to go back on August 1st um, <clears throat> to start the new season. And there are a number of things that... Uh, uh, will be, have been revealed over the last three months as to why it couldn't be finished at this point. So I uh, don't want to go back over and rewrite history, but as it comes up over and above that, I, I just try and relay some of the messages that are coming through on YouTube and Facebook as well. Uh, and the, the other point I was going to make, just in regards to Hearts and Hibs, uh, the Sun had a story, uh, Tom, Daniel Stendhal looks as if his future could be determined in the next 48 hours. Uh, certainly the vibe we get is that he won't be the manager. There's a few twists and turns that could happen, but uh, there's going to be one heck of a shake-up at Dane Castle. There is, and for, for me, I, I would, I would be, if I was a Hearts fan, I, would, I wouldn't want Stendhal in the club. Uh, I think he, if he was committed and totally committed to the club, he would come out and see it. And say no matter what division Hearts are going to be in, I want to be the manager of Heart of McGlothian. And he's not said that, so I don't think he's I don't think he's his heart's in it. So I would get rid of him. If I was on Budge, I would look to see try and get somebody else in. Um, there's a num numerous, you know, different guys out there who you could maybe come in. John Robertson obviously being the one. Um, Gary Naismith, Gary Locke could maybe come in and assist him. So there's a lot of a lot of good managers out there who I think would, would jump at the chance to bring Hearts back into the into the Premier League if they get relegated, you know, we're, we're talking as if, you know, they're definitely going getting relegated. There's still a court case to come, as it seems. So, listen, it's something yeah. there. But if I was Daniel Stendhal, Peter, I would be committing no matter what league Hearts were in. And he's not done that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, if I was a Hearts fan, I'd want rid of him. Yeah, strangely enough, Robbie, uh, I think Inverness have been clever. They've boxed off Robbo. If Hearts can't get Robbo for one reason or another, um, and I don't think it's beyond the realms of, Getting them because they've got a they've got a benefactor in the back there that can move mountains. Let's be honest with it. And if he takes it upon himself to say, "Tan, here's another couple of million," Hearts could get Robertson out of Inverness. If that wasn't the case, I'll tell you who I would go for now. If I was uh, Hearts for somebody to get them out of that division in double quick time, and and back up where they should be, um, I'd go for Tommy Wright. Yeah, well, we're still waiting on the Tommy Wright situation. You know, he left very abruptly, and I think we all assumed uh, that's because he had somewhere else to go. Uh, but that that doesn't seem to materialise so far. Uh, I know Tam Cowan doesn't like us talking about his manager. You know, I think he's done yeah. more than enough to to be good enough to go and be the Hearts manager. But you're right. You know, that it'd be interesting to see what way they go down. I said the other day, it'd be interesting to see who she seeks for advice on this one, uh, because obviously she'll need somebody to, to help her down that path. Uh, and there will be loads of candidates, there's no doubt about that, when a, a job as big as Hearts comes up, I'm sure there'll be yeah. loads of top class candidates. I'm not, see I'm, not, I'm not seeing for a minute, Tam, Stephen Robinson taking the Hearts job in the Championship. I don't know about you. Uh, no, I think he's he's got something really good going on at Motherwell. He's built a great squad there. He's he's scouting networks second to none. He seems seems to bring in these gems from down south in the lower leagues, and uh, they come up here and do really well. And he can and he, and he sells them on. So they've got a great model at Motherwell. They're a very well run club. So I, I don't see him really. You know, I, obviously I think Hearts are a bigger club than Motherwell, but I don't see him. You know, stepping down if they if they remain in, if they go down in the championship. Yeah, here's a strange request, Ruffy, and not often that I actually do these, but every now and then I like to throw it out there. Uh, Peter Lees, who's watching us on YouTube, says, any chance Ruffy could say hello to Mrs. Lees? Mrs. Lees, yes, and uh, obviously, <laughs> hello, Mrs. Lees. Uh, uh, obviously, I can't, 
Uh, what, what am I wishing her? Was it her birthday or something? No, no, just, no, no just say hello. No. Just say hello. They're not, <laughs> you know, oh, they're we, not, we they're not, they're not we, obviously we, not, but they're not, they're not obviously uh, part of the Lee's Macaroon family. No, because no, I, I knew, oh. I knew, I knew some people from the Lee's Macaroon family who play tennis oh. down at our, our club. So I was just oh, wondering right. if there were any relations. Well, Tom. You know, who knows? You don't, I just you, you don't, you don't, you don't uh, want Ruffy. You don't want Ruffy wishing your wife or, uh, say no, hello to your wife or your girlfriend. You don't, you don't want to go there. <laughs> exactly. But P- Peter thought he would go there, and I thought, well, yes, why not? Uh, Let's just yeah. see in um, and then see if it jogs a memory in Ruffy's mind. But no. Um, so uh, Stendhal, um, listen, uh, I, I think you know they'll, they'll need to think long and hard about and get somebody that galvanises the support as well if he does indeed go in the next 48 hours. Uh, with regards to the, the Hibbies, they're talking about they might be able, they might be forced into selling some of their stars. Now, when you talk about selling some of their stars, some of the guys that are on decent money, I would suggest to you right now that Scott Allen, um, Martin Boyle, Ryan Porteous, is that the type of player that suddenly heads out the door, Tom? Yeah, um, listen. I think um, I think Boyle's in his last year's con. I think he's in the last year of his contract. I think Marciano is the same. I think if there's decent enough bids come in for them, then they would then they would think about get letting them go. Scott Allen as well. Christian Dodge, obviously, a big outlay on him. I think they paid three hundred grand for him. Um, he's he's after a very slow start. He's 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 a top goal scorer. He's he's probably one that Championship League One teams down in England would have a look at. So listen, it's just it's a tough situation for every club. Um, I think Hibs have tried to do it the right way, but you know, be two or three months down the line, you know, there's no sign of any fans coming into the stadium. I think a lot of clubs will now start to panic, to be honest, and think, well, how can we get through this full year without any supporters? And they'll be looking to cut their cloth accordingly, not just Hibs. Yeah, um, Paul Sinclair has uh, just posted stars, LOL. Um, so cl- clearly <laughs> the banter continues. I, I love the uh, the old East versus West in the city of Edinburgh. It's absolutely first class, the banter at times. But of course, uh, I think there's a few good players that uh, will be cherry picked from him <laughs> if they suddenly start uh, deciding to sell them. Interestingly enough, guys, and I'm, I'm, I'm only going to say this to you, um, there's a, a gentleman we uh, had contact with the day at uh, PLZ Soccer, and they've sent us some very, very uh, interesting pictures. I might as well just actually tell you about it now, Ruffy. Why not? Um, before we get into this interview with David Winnie, but uh, I don't know if you watch the uh, Star Trek's uh, face swap uh, that happens when they they swap the faces of Star Trek and turn them into women. <clears throat> Have you witnessed that on social media, Ruffy? I've seen yeah. it. No, no, I haven't seen that. Yeah, well, <clears throat> well, that that's gone on. But uh, one of the guys, and we have to thank him. Uh, he's um, he he's got a website, or uh, actually a a Twitter account called Anti Social, uh, and of course I don't follow it. Um, but I, I did actually see someone like it today and I laughed heartily because he's he's obviously entered into the spirit of trying to bring a little smile to his Ruffy and in the same face swap manner if you want to see him Ant T Social at We Nippy Sweetie which I think is a great handle Tam I don't know about you but uh, when your mum when your mum when your mum didn't want to swear she said watch out for him he's a wee nippy sweetie <laughs> so, so Aye, there's a few of them in Scotland <laughs> absolutely so at We Nippy Sweetie has just entered into the fun, Ruffy, and face-swapped some Celtic players. And and this is what they would look like as women. So have a look, Ruffy, and give us your thoughts. Now, do you know who the, the, the player on the, the, the left of the three is? Would that be Lee Griffiths? Yeah. And what about the middle one? Would that be Tom Roddick? Roddick? Yep, yep. And the, and the one on the right? Oh, it's Will Lenny. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I, I don't know about you, Tom, but full, full marks to, to at we nippy sweetie because I'm looking there and I'm thinking to myself, I might give Tom Rogic a call. <laughs> <laughs> Griffiths looks better than a woman, as a woman. Oh, my, a million percent. He does, doesn't he? And of course, it reminds me when I looked at Le- when I looked at Lenny there, I just thought of the classic Peter Crouch gag. What would you have been if you weren't a footballer? 
<laughs> a virgin. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just, I just looked there and I laid there. I thought, there you go. Same as a woman. It's absolutely classic. Uh, but the, the <laughs> so well done to uh, Auntie Social. Absolutely brilliant the way he's uh, put that together. And I kid you not, Tom, and I'm not making this up. We have uh, one of our guys, as you know, Paul, who works with us. Um, and Paul and I colluded one day uh, where we got Paul's face and turned it into uh, what he would look like if he was a woman. And suddenly we said to Ruffy when he came in, have you seen Paul's sister? And you should have seen his face light up. <laughs> he was like, yeah, she looks kind of nice. She? <laughs> it was absolutely classic. So I'm looking there and I thought, well done, that nippy sweetie. Uh, a, a great little bit of fun um, with him. I'll tell you one thing, if you're in the dressing room, Tom, and you've seen those pictures, you know, when you see some of the players, uh, and that he's done Peter Lowell as well. I mean, some of the some <laughs> of the uh, conversions are mental. Good bit of fun, though. Ah, brilliant. Ah, it's a good laugh, isn't it? It uh, keeps us all amused in these hard times. But I uh, fair play to him. It's... it's, it's... Some of the definitely some of the women look better than the than the guys. Yeah, you learn for one as well. <laughs> You're in big trouble, boy. Uh, I was going to ask you just on on the point of uh, players coming in and out. Mother will have just gone about their business, uh, Ruffy. There's been no bumping their gums and 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 certainly no negativity coming out. I think there's, I think they're aware of the financial implications of the coronavirus and what impact it will have on them but they've managed to get three players in already and <laughs> some clubs are obviously trying to recruit yeah, as Tam said he's got a, a really good net, network down south down the lower divisions he seems to have the knack identifying the right player for the style of play that mother will want to play and it, it's absolutely I, I can't think of a failure to tell you the truth uh, of the clubs that, the players that have come up they've all gone they've all done a, a decent shift and as I said all along, you know, they've been very, very not fortunate. They've, they've worked hard at bringing young players through and selling them on for a healthy profit. And obviously they banked all that money and now they're using it wisely. And that's why they're up where they are in the league. You know, that uh, a very, very well run club. Yeah. Uh, Tama, I think, uh, am I being fair to Dundee United? They've apparently lodged a 250,000 bid for Kevin Nisbet. Do you think they're trying to make sure that they're loading the bases in case Shanklin goes? Yeah, yeah, definitely, Peter. I think there'll be a lot of clubs in for Shanklin. I think over the last couple of years, he's proven, you know, he's now an international player as well. I think there'll be a lot of clubs who would like to take Lauren Shanklin. And Kevin Nisbet, we spoke about him last week. He's, his record's been fantastic for Dunfermline over the last couple of seasons. He's really. You know, he started, I think it was at Partick Thistle. Um, Ruffy would probably tell me that. And he, I don't think he'd done too well. I don't think he was maybe ready for that kind of level. But he's went away. He's went down the leagues with Aith Rovers and come back up with, back into with Dunfermline. And he's been brilliant. Stevie Crawford really, really likes him as a player. And, uh, you know, 250 grand, I think, is quite a lot of money for Dunfermline, you know, in the current climate. So I think they would need to think seriously about accepting that. But I think Shankland probably will leave Dundee United. So they're right to get... Maybe the next Lauren Shankland then. Yeah, uh, and of course, if Johnny Hayes, uh, who seems to be edging ever closer, Ruffy, to heading back to Pataudry on a two-year deal, which I think would be a great bit of business for Aberdeen. Yeah, and the player, you know, obviously at this stage, anybody's career, you know, two years in the light of what's been happening around about the clubs, two years is a fantastic offer. Obviously, the, the finances won't be the same as what he was getting at Celtic, but you would like to think that he'd want to get back playing regular. And uh, he's got a good relationship up in Aberdeen. He'll know most of the players and he'll fit in really well. So I, I, I don't think that's a big decision for him, you know, unless somebody comes in with some outrageous bid for down south. But uh, I think Aberdeen's a happy environment with the new, the new training ground and everything. So I think that's where they'll end up. Uh, Dougie Liddell said, is no one going to mention on this programme that Gerard has a problem with his star player going AWOL? Of course, um, you know, the one thing I, I would say about Alfredo Morelos uh, right now, uh, Tam, is, you know, people put two and two together and make five. I think his partner has just had a baby. Um, mm. I think Rangers will probably look to try and sell him in the summer. So, But you can't start second-guessing what arrangements they've had in the background, whether he should be there or whether he's got an extended stay uh, with his partner. 
Yeah, Peter, we, we don't know that. You know, if Stephen Gerrard and Rangers come out and criticise him, then, then fair enough. But not not fans' websites and hearsay and different things. You've got to take, wait till clubs. You know, he might be allowed extra time. As you said, his partner's just had a kid. You know, maybe he's, maybe he's got extra time to go away. I think Rangers will sell him in the summer. Anyway, the summer, I'm talking about the start of the season. Yeah. Um, the Rangers will sell him. I think he'll be away and uh, they'll look to try and get somebody else in. Yeah, I'm curious to see. Uh, I know that uh, a number of people have been talking about Rangers have to really try and get a good calibre of player in to give Steven Gerrard as much ammunition as possible. I'll tell you one thing, Ruffy. Uh, Steven Gerrard will have to make sure that when they are going out recruiting, they can't have anybody that's not going to contribute. I think we've been talking about it over the last month or so. If there is a, a kitty there, they've got to get two or three who are actually going to be starters for me and better than what they had last season yeah we've already we've already spoken about it you know he's done remarkably well with some of the players that he's brought in the club have given him some money you know to spend uh, but again he'll need to go up a level and he'll know that himself he'll need to go out and buy you know particularly I, I've said all along he needs to start buying winners uh, who have been at other clubs I know that might, might be difficult you know with the the wages and everything, but I think uh, he'll identify that that was the feeling just after Christmas that uh, a lot of the players couldn't stand up to the rigours of the run-in and the pressure that goes with it. So it would be that kind of player, you know, and, and there will be a lot of them about. It's just up to the recruitment to see if you can bring the right ones in. Yeah, getting Morelos out the door, and, and I don't think, I'm not looking at it as being in any way vindictive towards him because, you know, I've had chats with him uh, before. He came up and won the goal of the season at the PFA Awards. He's a, he, he's a young lad who takes a heck of a lot of criticism. Some of it he brings on himself, uh, Tam, but I think this is the time that they will look to cash in on him. What they get for him in the current climate, I do not know, but I wonder how much, if, if any of that money, if they sold Morelos would go to Steven Gerrard to get someone who fills and let's not make a mistake about this who fills a 29 goal gap yeah listen I think Rangers will, will sell him as you said I, I'm no idea how much money they're going to get from now um, but I think the player himself wants to leave I think it's been clear for six months you know he's been wanting to leave um, you know and I, I think he'd be looking to try and get to, to England um, but as you said, have, have, have English clubs got 10 million, 12 million to spend on them? You know, because I think if the season would have went on, you know, I think Rangers would have got that. But now I think they'll be looking at 68 million, um, which is still a large sum of money, but you know, not as much as they would have got. But I think it's, yeah. I think it would suit everyone now for 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 Morales to leave and Rangers to get money in to strengthen the team. I'm going to stick with my 10 million, Ruffy. I got I got pelters for it over a year ago when I said before he'd scored his 29 that he was worth 10 million. I'm going to stick with that because I think, you know, you only have to look at some of the clubs are being prudent down south. But I still think there's an element of people who will who will actually just <clears throat> um I think the I think there are there are people who will actually just say no. Let's steam in with the money again. You only have to look at what's happening in the championship. Uh, you know, they, they did a, a, an investigation into the money uh, that was being uh, spent there. And still clubs are overspending in their budget. Mm -hmm. Look, there's no doubt about it. He's a goal scorer uh, and a very good goal scorer on his game. You know, obviously his temperament's a bit suspect, but you, ha you have to make your mind up. Is he a premiership player? Or is he a championship player? And both of them have got money to burn. You just have to look, look at the players that they buy in uh, at the, this time of the season, you know, and, and some of them we've never even heard of. But they're paying 15, 18, 20 million. So he comes into that bracket. For me, it just depends on which club it is that come in for him. Because there's no doubt about it, he's a goal scorer and he will score in most teams. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, if you think your league sometimes can become predictable, what about the German league last night? Werder Bremen uh, lost to Bayern Munich, and Bayern Munich wrapped up their eighth successive title. Tam uh, winning that league, which I think we all knew they were going to. Yeah, fantastic team. Um, I think since Flex come in, they've won 20, 26 games out of 29. Um, they've been in a great, great run of form. And uh, they're probably a dark horse now, I think, for the Champions League because they were they weren't they were weren't miles off at the start of the season. 
obviously sacked their manager and the, the new guy came in and they've been brilliant since then. But, you know, they're the, the biggest club by a mile in Germany with the biggest budget and you would expect them with the power they've got and the, and the financial muscle they've got to win the league every year. Such, you know, the same as Juventus, you know, the same as clubs like that who dominate in their, their domestic leagues. But no, I, I watched the game last night. They're a, they're a tremendous side. Yeah, Lewandowski, 31 goals, Rafi, phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen him at, at club and country. You know, he is phenomenal. There, there's no doubt about that, you know, and uh, that is why, you know, that uh, they want to keep a hold of him. I'm sure there'll be a lot of big, big clubs uh, would be interested in getting him, but he seems to be happy there in, in, in Germany. But uh, certainly we've seen him in uh, the international game against Scotland and he was absolutely superb there as well. But no, he's a top one. And, uh, you know, you've already touched on that you get a striker who's scored more than 30 goals a season, then you're going to be up there challenging and winning things. Yeah, Hugh Hepburn Duff says, Peter's at the guessing game, along with all the obsessed on here about Alfredo. That's the nature of football chat. Uh, you know, you only look at the evidence, what's gone before, uh, and the calls that you make and the sense that you get from a player um, and a club. Um, of course, everybody's guessing on it until he actually signs a deal with another club. But uh, would Rangers take £10 million for him? I think they would. So, Hugh, that's the nature of football. That's what we all do from time to time. We guess, we speculate, we firm up based on evidence that we have. That's the nature of it. That's the joy of it. I don't know about you, but that's the joy of it when you start looking uh, and finding out things about certain players. Um, so uh, thanks, Hugh. We always like to hear your opinion on it, but at, at times it's just looking at the evidence that's before you. Um, you guys, will you be sitting down from six o'clock onwards, Tom, and watching the English Premier League? Yeah, I don't think I will. I think I'm going to go for a game of golf with my pal. Yeah, I think... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not been enjoying the closed door games. You know, I've been I like I like watching Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich have been different class. Dortmund, you know, I'd watched a few of their games, but some of the games with the closed door have been really poor, no tempo whatsoever. Uh, so no, I probably won't tune in. Yeah, I maybe I maybe watch a couple of games at the weekend, but not tonight, Peter. Wow, uh, East Coast bride man in has friend Storm Ruffy can't believe it. Eh? <laughs> so he's go and and the good news Ruffy is he's going out to play golf, which means he hasn't started his lessons on tennis because they're not too far away from getting they're not too far away from getting rattled him and Ferguson because the courts no. are open. Ruffy, I don't know if you got the email, but the courts are open and available for bookings. Yeah, but fortunately for these two, it's only singles that you can play just now. So we're hoping ah. tomorrow maybe Nicholas Surgeon will relax that rule a wee bit and we can get doubles back on the court because that'll be the first booking for us hey. this season. You know, we get a oh, game yeah. of doubles. Me, yeah. me, and, me and Barry, have, we've, we've ordered our rackets. Oh, did you get one? Oh. Yes. What, yep. have, what did you What did you order? <laughs> I, 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 got a, I got a Wilson racket. Uh, and Barry's got a, a fancy name. I can't remember the name of it. A babbler. Uh, a babbler. Yes, 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 yes. Barry's got oh, one of them. This is, so this is the rackets are on route. <laughs> yep, I'm looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. I don't know about you, Rafi. I, I, I will uh, watch the footy tonight. I'm going to watch Man City Arsenal. I'm, I'm going to nip out for a wee while and I might catch the tail end of uh, the other one, Aston Villa against Sheffield United because it's got implications at the bottom end. If Villa were to win tonight, they come out of the bottom three. Oh, I certainly would watch the Man City game. Man City Arsenal, there's enough players on show there, you know, to, to get a wee glimpse of them. And I know, I get where Tam's coming from. I haven't been, you know, excited with the lack of the, the crowds and that. But it'd be worthwhile seeing how the, the tempo they play at and uh, the big stars turning it on as they usually do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, before we hear from David Winnie, I just want to say, uh, and again, uh, forgive me for this, I'm guilty of being slightly presumptuous. Thanks to um, uh, Aunt T Social at Wee Nippy Sweetie uh, for those pictures. I thought it was great. Great bit of fun on uh, Twitter. Could be actually a girl as well um, at Wee Nippy Sweetie because, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be a, a male Twitter account. Could be a girl one time. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't want to be guilty of, you know, just thinking. No, no, don't go down that road. Only, I don't want to think that guys are only good at coming up with these things. So, uh, at wee nippy sweetie, um, 
whatever gender you are, it was a great bit of fun and, and well done uh, for, for allowing us to use it as well. And hopefully your mates love Steam. And if you haven't actually uh, witnessed it on um, his or her Twitter account, then Steam in. There's some really good, funny pictures there. Um, really appreciate that. Okay, um, guys, hang on. Uh, and Rafi, I'd be really curious to see what your take is on this interview I had with David Winnie. David Winnie, as you know, is part of the St Mirren side that won the Scottish Cup in 1987. He had uh, a colourful career, which I think the best of it was St Mirren and Aberdeen. And then he just flirted around clubs here and there for one or two years and then decided, obviously, to pursue a career in law. He is a successful lawyer in London and he works mainly on sports law as well. So he knows what he's talking about and he can look from outside into Scottish football. Now he certainly played most of his career in Scottish football but earlier today I caught up with him uh, at his home to see exactly what he makes of what's been happening over the last three months. Well, I'm delighted to say our special guest is ex St Mirren Aberdeen player David Winnie, who is now a sports lawyer uh, and working, I presume, still in London, but probably all over. David, I'm delighted that you could join us. First of all, are you safe and well? I am indeed, yeah. Thanks very much, Peter. Thanks very much. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having a chat with you. As as an outsider now, looking in, uh, what have you made of the last three months of madness going on in Scottish football? Oh, Peter, where do we start? Um, I mean, it, it, it's, it's... Looking at it, it's been like a slowly evolving train wreck, really. And right from the outset, you can see that no good was actually going to come of this. And, and you know, now we're now in the courts, so it's not great. I have to say, it's not great. Yeah, uh, and with that in mind, you mentioned the fact that it's, it looks as if it's going to court. What do you make of the strength of the, the case between Hearts and Partick Thistle against the SPFL? I mean, any lawyer will tell you there's nothing 100% guaranteed. At best, Peter, I'd probably say their chances are 50-50. Um, I think that their, their main argument, really, um, as far as I can see anyway, is it's was the decision in all the circumstances, you know, with the COVID and all of that, was the decision that was taken to relegate them and Party Thistle, was it fair? Was it just in the circumstances? Um, OK, there's a, the various legal arguments within that, what actually transpired from the uh, the written resolution that was put forward and the whole Dundee um, debacle with the change in the vote <clears throat> and what was or what wasn't um, put in the, res uh, the written resolution. Uh, but I think in in having to consider it, the courts will need to the court will need to look at the actual fairness of the decision. Um, against Hearts uh, and Thistle. Let me ask you this. Um, this is uh, the the part there where you uh, pick up on a point you made. You said, "Is it fair?" I've met many. I've met many a lawyer who says certain things are not fair, but we've got to argue the technicalities of what's written in the rules. Hmm. I mean, I mean, if, if we look at it, the rules, then Peter. Um, there's in the uh, SPFL rules. Oh, well, I take a step back. The the SPFL and the clubs. It's a membership. It's it's a membership of clubs, um, and it's an agreement between the clubs and the SPFL and the clubs themselves. Within that, and it states it explicitly in the rules that I can't remember the clause, but each club has. Uh, uh, a duty they're obliged to act with the utmost good faith towards the SPFL and towards each other. With that in mind, with that backdrop, we then, as I, as I, as I mentioned, um, we think about the Dundee vote and the way it was lodged as a no, was sent by email, um, and then it was changed. Um, that and then the uh, what went on in terms of um, conversations between clubs and Dundee, um, 
could we say that the, the one was the procedure that was adopted, correct, by the SPFL? I don't know. I don't think so. And two, were the clubs in that instance acting in utmost good faith? That, that's an issue as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I looked at it, and again, I don't know the intricacies of each part of the SPFL rules, but I looked at it and, and thought to myself, well, bear in mind what's happened in France, uh, apart from, uh, you know, boards taking a decision without consulting their members, I think maybe the SPFL might be riding along on the basis, well, listen, this was open to all the members. They had their vote. We got the casting votes in this, and that allowed us to go through this certain process. But as you say, the grey area here seems to be the Dundee, and of course, what I would suggest was collusion by two or three on telling each other which way they were voting, knowing that that would then either exactly. make it make it, uh, you know, a vote that's going in their favour or against, you know, other clubs. So th these are the yeah. technical areas where I think it's going to be centred around. Exactly. Peter, as well, the 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 board, the, the directors of, uh, or the board of the SPFL have got a duty to provide um, full information, or they did have in this written resolution. Um, and again, was that provided um, to allow the members of the clubs to make a full um, and considered um, decision on the written resolution? I don't know. I mean, even taking that aside, and the alternative, I mean, Hearts, again, they're a, a minority shareholder um, within the SPFL. They could look to... Um, under the Companies Act, they could say, well, we've been um, um, uh, prejudiced against here um, by this action. I mean, I think the, the, the vote, or not so much the vote, but they were um, they were relegated on a, a points per game basis. Um, is that fair in the, in the circumstances? It wasn't mathematically impossible for them to be, to be um, uh, they could have saved themselves. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't, as I say, mathematically impossible. Um, and so you look at it and you think there's an element of unfairness, unreasonable this uh, here. And from a court perspective, I think they would probably look at it uh, uh, from an objective point of view, um, and against the backdrop of the whole COVID um, situation here. Uh, and take they have to take that into account as to whether the decision to relegate Hearts and more particularly actually Thistle was it fair in the circumstances? Um, listen, we're only two or three minutes into this, Colin, already, and already we're in the mire of what Hearts and Partick Thistle are going to do, and, and obviously whatever the result is, Stranraer will have to abide by it as well. Um, let me yeah, ask you then. What is the end game here on this one? What's the end result? Is it reinstatement, which I think is a long shot? Is it compensation? Um, is it to serve a critical blow to the SPFL plans to start the season in the first place? Because I noticed that you have been quoted as saying, you know, uh, an interim interdict could stop the season starting, and that would be that would be a howitzer of a one for every club in in, in Scotland. <laughs> I know, Peter. I mean, I, again, I don't know what um, um, remedies are seeking, um, but it's a possibility they could seek um, an injunction. Well, the, the, the Scottish will call it an interdict um, to stop the season starting. Um, but you know, given given again the backdrop of 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 this pandemic and that nothing's open, the courts are probably very similar. How long would it take? Um, because we're now we've only got about I think you correct me if I'm wrong here, Peter, but about six weeks, eight weeks maximum before the start of um the planned start of a new season. Yeah, um, August first. So it's going to be really, uh, it's going to be really tight. I mean, unless they can some fast track facility to allow Harps to um, seek a remedy or an interim remedy from the court 
to stop the season whilst this um, plays out, um, then what we're looking at in the alternative is the season starts um, at the beginning of August. This court case rumbles on. Um, if Hearts get judgment in their favour, um, and as part of that, it's reinstated into the league. Where does that leave us? Where does that leave the clubs? Where does that leave the um, the league structure itself? It's uh, it's it's, cha- it's chaotic um, and extreme, actually. Well, the other aspect could be. of this, and, and it, here's me flipping this, David, um, because obviously uh, the one thing that goes against Hearts in this, and not that they'll bother at one jot about this, because they obviously want to try and seek, um, you know, uh, the the fairness uh, and a result. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever that result may be, but UEFA and yeah. the SPFL again don't look um, favourably on clubs who take their own member associations to court. So the, the, there's going to be a fair bit of resentment. I've no doubt the SPFL is working in the background right now, scurrying about, then okay, here's where we stand legally, but what can we do to alleviate this getting to court? I've no doubt that's happening, but I wonder what damage this will do. Um, you know, to hearts on the basis of the the UEFA and the SPFL don't look kindly on going to court. Are they just going to view that as, well, that's the collateral damage we'll have to take because we've got to go the full hog here? I think so, Peter. Um, Because from, you know, one of the remedies we've talked about is reinstatement back into the Premier League again. Another one as an alternative, and maybe as well as, is uh, compensation. Um, I mean, and I've seen figures banded about, you know, some of six, seven, eight million pounds. If they're successful with that through the court, it's the clubs ultimately that's going to have to pay that. Um, and where are they going to find that? I mean, we're struggling. They're struggling as it is. Where are they going to find that money? Um, and you know, lastly, in terms of of bad feelings or ill will or anything like that. I think, to be honest, Peter, it's, as far as Hearts concerned, it's gone way beyond that. They've given the other um, members of the SPFL, the clubs, as far as they can see, ample opportunity to to restructure the league or what have you. And I've, they've all decided to um, mind thyself, shall we say, they've all you know, it's, it's all been for their own interests. So I don't think Hearts really are going to bother um, too much, frankly, about um, the ill will generated against them and uh, them in this. They're just now thinking of themselves. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because I've been, yeah, I've been very critical of the way the clubs have conducted themselves, self-interest, divisions, yeah. Petty, petty mindedness, uh, and uh, and of course, over and above that, not one ounce of compassion or viewing this uh, with the attitude of sporting integrity. Um, it's all been about the "I'm all right, Jack" attitude to it. But um, I, I just wonder if there might be a, an outside salvation, which we don't know about. Is listen, some clubs might turn around and say we can't fulfil our fixtures or we can't meet the criteria and that might open an avenue for a thistle to remain in the championship. Certainly I don't think it'll it'll happen for Hearts but I just wonder um, at, at this point if is it a restriction of trade? I you mean in terms of um, thistle and, and Hearts being relegated and, and the, 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 the inability to play a, a full card is that what you mean? Yeah, I'm looking at Hearts and I'm saying to myself, well, suddenly they've got a truncated season and then suddenly Thistle have got a situation where they say, well, we've, we're, we're available here. We can, we can, we've we got a squad. We can play. But League 1 and League 2 might not be up till January. Um, I mean, that... I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question, actually. I think that would come into consideration in terms of um, damage is sought, Peter. Um, yeah. I'm not sure about um, restraint of trade. I think it's maybe in terms of damages from a financial aspect. We won't get any, we won't be able to get any income in. Um, but I'm not sure about the restraint of trade. But it's a, it's a good point. It's a good argument. 
Yeah, uh, and the other aspect I was going to say to you here is you mentioned the figures there. We're talking about six, seven million. On the back of that, they've got just over two million to pay back to BT Sport. They'll have BBC, they'll have Sky to pay. Only in Scotland could we be in a situation where we've got a five-year deal worth one hundred and sixty million pounds. Yet suddenly we could be in court and in a situation where the SPFL is paying back something like ten million plus. It's madness. I know. It's as you say. It's only only in Scotland could you see this. <laughs> um, I know. It, it, it beggars belief. It's you know. I've lo- looking around the various leagues in Europe. In Belgium and Holland and Portugal, you know, similar leagues, similar sizes to an extent, and they have okay. It's, it's, legally, there's been issues, or, or they've gone to court, but they've managed to resolve the, the things, the resolve issues in the main, in a friendly and amicable manner. Not here in Scotland. Um, it seems to be that um, this. This pandemic, this COVID thing, has actually brought out all the the um, the kind of ill will, bad feeling um, within the clubs towards each other. Um, and I'm and I, to be honest, Peter, I, I feared going forward because this this will take a while to settle. It really will. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, um, three quick points before you go, and uh, sure. I'm glad you and I were able. I'm glad you and I were able to laugh there. If you didn't laugh, you'd cry with the whole thing the way it's unfolding. Right, um, so <clears throat> I've got two two points that I think just take it on a wee bit. As you look as an outsider on this, what changes would you make structurally if you had the chance? Um, I mean, I'd. I'd as a as a as a group of members, I think there there are too many clubs. Um, you know, we've got, I think we've got forty two clubs. Re- uh, in reality, I think only I say half of them, if that, um, should be, or we should have only have two leagues. I think Gordon uh, Gordon Strachan touched on it previously. If you're going to have a proper professional league with full-time clubs, then you have to act that way. Um, I think for too long, um, we've had clubs that are that they're not they're not generating in for Scottish football. They're, they're good in their own sense as in as in local uh, clubs serving the community in that respect, but they're not providing anything for Scottish football. Um, I mean, it might be a bit drastic, but I think that could be a way forward here. Um, that's again. That's just my view on it. Yeah. Um. And is there anything, as a sports lawyer, is there anything you've seen out with Scotland in 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 other sports or maybe in other divisions in, in other countries that you think we should embrace? Something that you've thought that would be good. I mean, I had Lachlan Cameron on, who was the Air United uh, owner, and he says, you know, we should look towards a commissioner who just deals solely with, you know, almost like. I'm in control of this. I'm going to take you forward as a as a group, and this is what we're going to embrace. We're going to embrace this for the game. This is the way we do it, rather than this infighting that you've just spoken about. He suggested a commissioner. Yeah. Um, I wonder if there's other things out there you think would change your mindset or, and take us out of the dark ages. No, again, that's a good point, Peter. I mean, I don't, I don't have you know anything concrete to suggest, but I mean, what I would say is. If we're going to move forward um, as a game in Scotland, uh, football, I think all the parties, whether that be national government, local government, the clubs, and the various associations, they, we need they need to come together. They need to have some common ground here because Scotland is uh, sorry, football in Scotland, it's it's more than just a game. It's deep seated, deep rooted in our culture. And if that is thriving, then the economy and the various follow-on things from that, say, for example, health, that all starts to, to improve as well. But when there's this infighting, this bitterness, this hatred, it has a negative effect. So all the interested parties here need to be able to get together, sit around the table and find common ground to take things forward. But can we do that? Can they do that? 
I don't know, Peter, because this this uh, whole COVID thing has just shown that that there's um there um there's a lot of bitterness, a lot of division, a lot of backstabbing. One body controlling it all. Um, are you suggesting that, or is that what you think is happening? I don't think that will happen because, quite simply, <laughs> they are they Hi. are steeped in bitterness, division, and their mentality is quite simply: oh. if one or two or three can control it, then the last thing they need is is one body above them controlling everything. Yeah, it's the clubs and the SPFL, the the directors, they've got a duty out with out with um. Their, the the interests of their own clubs. They've got a duty towards the game in general in Scotland. They're not they're not just there to um, look after their own clubs. It's the it's the good of the game in Scotland as well. They have to remember that. But I mean, in, in true Scottish fashion, and I, I can I can see it now standing back a little bit away from it that we we start an argument or start a fight in an empty room. Really, it's just the way we are. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, last point now, which has got nothing to do with what's happening at the moment. You'll be happy uh, right, to okay. know. But, uh, right, okay. but, it's, but, but it's, e it's equally just as tough. Knowing what you know now, uh, would you yep. swap being a footballer for a lawyer all your life, or would you? Which which way would you go? Um, you mean would have would have would have been a footballer if 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 uh, I had the choice again, yeah. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, yeah. Oh, aye. it's a, uh, it's a great time. Okay, I had ups and downs in my career and all that, but oh yeah, it was brilliant. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a great time. Um, and it kept me off the streets for a wee while. Yeah, absolutely. And and of course, on occasion, we would have to go and report on you. I'm just wondering now, and, and this is just a minor technicality for me, and I'm not sure about right. it. Do you send Do you send me an invoice for your time, or do I actually, or do I actually send you one? I'm not quite sure. You know how it works with sitting in your company; it can cost people money. <laughs> oh, I, well, you're on the clock just now. Did you not know that, Peter? I've, I've got my timer beside me here, so it's. Uh, the bill, just shortly after this, the bill is in the post, so uh, don't worry about that. I'm going to get my life. Uh, bro. Brilliant. That's absolutely fantastic. Listen, it's been a joy speaking to you. If only if, uh, it should have been in better times with better circumstances. But I know, I know. David, from, from everyone here in the football show, I want to thank you because it's good to get an insight and, and hopefully in better times we might meet up and share a pint uh, when we're all actually in a room not starting a fight. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks again, Peter. My pleasure. Cheers. Well, Ruffy, what do you make of what he's got to say on your case? Yeah, it was interesting. I'm, you know, looking at it from a lawyer's point of view, you know, talking about what's in the rule book, talking about fairness to your, 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 the other clubs in your, in your, your league, and the good faith that you have to show, and and that's that's just went right out the window. You know, that has there's none of that been shown in anything that we've been doing. The other thing uh, that he touched on was have the clubs been given uh, full information when they come to these resolution and voting? I suppose that'll be something looked into as well. But no, he he knows what he's talking about. He's a lawyer, you know, and I'm sure the lawyers that are dealing with Hearts and Partick Thistle will know the route that they're going to go down. I agree with you. I don't think it'll be for league for to get back in the leagues. I think there'll be other issues that uh, they'll, they'll want to maybe force on uh, but we'll have to wait and see what they are yeah that's it's the end result Tom that I just don't I, I can't work out where that's going I agree with Ruffy I think it'll be money Peter I don't see them you know reinstating teams back into leagues you know the fixtures will be out you know and I think they'll lose a lot of goodwill uh, from clubs and supporters if they delay the season even longer um, so I think it'll be a financial compensation that Hearts and Party Thistle obviously as well will be, will be going for <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's a question I put to him, Tam, and I just thought I'd put it to you. Uh, if you could do it all over again, is, is there anything you would do differently? Would you change anything about the career that you've had or the lifestyle you've had of what you've got up to? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would, me, I would change a lot, Peter. I would change a lot, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you know, 
people people say you know oh, that, that that guy get the get the most out of his career you know i think i get the least out of my career to be honest with you um which is which isn't isn't it funny um you know yeah. I, I should have should have knuckled down better and a better attitude but you can't change it now um i had some great times as well which i, I wouldn't change but in terms of overall having a better attitude and getting your head down and head screwed on then obviously i would i would change a lot of things but you only get one shot at it and that's what i tell the young kids now who i'm coaching you only get one chance yeah, it's interesting you saying that, Tom, because it depends on how you view the glass, half full or half empty. Some people would give uh, the right arm just to have what you had. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Um, you know, but just me personally, when you're looking through your career and things you've done, and you think, I wish I'd never done that. I wish I'd never said that to that manager. <laughs> I wish I'd have knuckled down at that club and different things. There's always things you'd, you'd like to change, and, and I think that's always a regret for it, for every player. And that's why I've got the utmost respect for, for guys who maybe haven't get the blessed with the most amount of natural talent, who get the most out of their career, you know, who ring every single ounce out it, you know, and, and there's a load of them, you know, off the top of my head who I could think of who have got the absolute most out of what their career, and you've, you've, that's great credit to them for that. Yeah, I don't want to put you on a downer, Tom, and I genuinely don't want to put you on a, a downer on this one, but uh, I'm now going to ask Ruffy the same question. Ruffy, uh, when you think you, you, you married a Miss Scotland, there was just a bevy of beauties. There was all sorts of stars along the way, uh, parties galore. You mixed with the rich and famous, uh, and over and above all of that, um, you know, you ended up with 53 caps, played for clubs, you're in two Hall of Fames. Is there anything you would change, Ruffy, from the life that you've had? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I had twenty, I had twenty, I had twenty-two years uh, uh, enjoying myself thoroughly, and what I did, getting up in the morning and knew I was going to do something. I was going to enjoy uh, every day uh, of every moment. As you're right, I had ten years of playing for Scotland. The only doubt would be obviously the, the money side of it now. I think when you see the the money that players are getting just now, but you have to you have to put that aside, uh, and uh, it's not it's you're not going to get it now. So you have to enjoy the 14 years you had at Partick Thistle, the six or seven years at Hibs, uh, and the people. And I missed it. The, the people that you you meet every day become your pals, uh, and 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 it's an enjoyment. It's just, I mean. You're privileged enough, and Tam's saying he had a lot of bad times, but he was privileged enough to be good uh, and better than all his mates that he used to play with, and he was good enough to play at a high level. So these are the things that you should enjoy and remember. But obviously, if I had got that uh, move to Man City, I might have been a wee bit more happier. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I knew, I, knew, I, knew, I knew that would be. I I knew that would be your only regret, Ruffy, before I even asked it. Um, although to be fair to you, if you were sold in today's market, um, I don't think you'd be friends with me or Tam. Um, anyway, apart from that, um, I, just as we were talking there, the statement has dropped from Hearts, a joint statement with uh, Partick Thistle uh, and they've today lodged a petition with the Court of Session to challenge the unfair and unjust decision of the SPFL to enforce relegation to the extreme detriment of those clubs affected. Unfortunately, Scottish football has been unable to pull together at this time of national crisis to prevent the need for this legal challenge. We desperately hoped court action would not be necessary, but we were left with no option. For clarity, our petition, this is the key one here, our petition does not seek to set aside or unravel the fee payments made to clubs, nor indeed the declaration of champions or the nomination of clubs who will participate in European competition. Instead, the petition primarily seeks to reduce the unfair resolution insofar as it changed the SPFL's rules on promotion and relegation. If that remedy is not granted by the court, we seek, in the alternative, awards of compensation relative to the significant financial loss which the unfair relegations will visit upon us. As matters stand, we have not asked the court to grant an interim interdict which would prevent next season commencing on August 1st. However, we have to reserve a right to do so in the event that becomes necessary. We would emphasise instead that we have no wish to disrupt Scottish football, but rather our aim is to have the proceedings litigated to a conclusion as quickly as possible. In that regard, the court has today granted our motion to reduce the normal period with which the SPFL must answer our petition to only seven days. No further comment will be made by either club at this time. Now, 
that tells us compensation first. Then, of course, they also want the resolution of where they're playing. Um, and then, as a last resort, there might be, depending on what the answers are coming from the SBFL, and I think it's a last resort, um, the interdict that we're talking about from stopping the Premier League starting. So I think that's first and foremost here. I think we're talking money, Ruffy. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, we've already discussed, you know, that the the result of put, being put where we've been put uh, is a lot of money uh, and it's a lot of players' livelihoods, you know, it's a lot of players going to lose uh, money out of this as well. And and why not if you can get some recompense from, from that, you know, to help you in your struggle to get back into the championship, why wouldn't you go for it? You know, obviously Hearts um, will be losing a lot more money than us. And as I said, Tam, I think when you read into that and you read as you get to the final couple of paragraphs, there certainly is um, the obvious um, point, which is an interim interdict, which is still there if they wish to do it, if they're not happy with the reply coming from the SBFL. So my view on that, Tam, is that the SBFL's reply, I think, will argue the case that they entered into uh, a vote which brought about a resolution agreed by all members. And I think that would yeah. be the strength of it. Yep. You know, the club's all voted to, to finish the season early. Um, we've, said it, we've said it this week. I think the Hearts and Partick Thistle will be trying to get some compensation. I don't see them getting reinstated into the league whatsoever. Um, the interdict, I think, is a threat. That's, I don't think they want to go through that. Um, I don't think Hearts or Partick Thistle would want to you know, hold up the leagues um, in terms of, you know, a lot of clubs will be seriously affected by that. I think both are entitled to, to be compensated. I've said that from the start. I think it's been unfair what's happened to, to Partick Thistle Hearts and, and to a certain extent, Stranraer. And I think they should all be, you know, get compensation from the clubs um, because they're going to lose a lot of money. I think this could get settled out of court. I don't, I don't know what you think, Peter, but I think this will be a quick resolution uh, for everyone. I don't see this getting dragged on for weeks and weeks and months, to be honest. Yeah, you are suggesting that eventually the SPFL turn around and say, OK, Hearts, you could potentially lose maximum five million. Here's your five million. Thistle, here's your one million. I don't think that... Well, that's a big amount of money. I don't, but I think they'll come to some sort of arrangement, Peter. I really do. I don't think it suits any anyone. For this to go down down the road of weeks and months of, of, of bitterness in a courtroom. So I think that Hearts and Partick Thistle will get some money. Um, where will they get everything they're looking for is another matter. But I think they're entitled to get compensation, to be honest. Yeah. I think yeah. I think well, uh, I think I think I think unfortunately, Peter, once this go goes to court, there's another can of worms going to get opened. Because all the stuff going by, the Dundee vote, you know, where did the vote go, all that, that's all going to raise its ugly head again. And it might get looked into a lot more seriously than what it did the first time. So it suits yeah, the SPFL uh, not, not for that to happen, to be honest. Well, listen, it's not the first time that an organisation has suddenly made an out-of-court settlement um, that, you know, keeps clubs or groups happy. Uh, I only give you, I don't know if you guys remember, the, the Eri Henri hand that denied the Republic of Ireland a place at the World Cup, and I think the FAI got a £5 million payout um, for being denied through cheating, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, that wasn't picked up um, and denied them the place at the World Cup. So, uh, you know, who knows? Um, um, I think the SPFL uh, have got a lot of thinking to do, and certainly the other part of this is the rumbling of discontent, of mistrust, uh, of anger towards each other, uh, certainly from a point of view, not only of Partick Thistle, Hearts and Stranraer, but many other clubs will continue on this. So we've given you the latest press release on it. We've heard from David Winnie as well. Thank you to David for joining us. Thank you to uh, Antisocial uh, for our lovely uh, pictures, which brought us a, a nice little smile on a day like today. Uh, and also I'm going to say, Ruffy, this is for you, Dean Riley. His 13-year-old uh, son, Michael, is running a 5K every day for the month of June. Now, 5K every day 
is good going. He's raising money for MS therapy in Leith. Uh, and he said it would mean the world for you to give him a shout out. Michael is doing a great job and he wants a Hibs legend. And since there's only you and Tam on, I presume he means you. <laughs> well, I have to say, I have to say well done, Michael. Uh, I know yeah, how difficult it is a 5K <laughs> at any time. So no, keep, keep going, keep doing well and keep raising a lot of money for a lovely cause. You're doing a terrific job. At 13 years of age, Tom, to do 5k every day is good going. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't do that when I was 23. Uh, so so best of luck to Michael. Um, I hope it all goes well for you, pal. And you're, you're, you're doing a great deed. And I'm sure that will come round to you eventually. Um, so well done. Yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely superb. And uh, thanks very much. And also, I'm just going to say uh, well done to Lynn Sunderland's niece, who's managed 425 uh, keepy uppies. Um, and I think it is uh, Katie Carter is her name. 425. What's your record for keepy uppies, Tom? Uh, I've, not, I've not really kept a record, but I could keep the ball up all day. I was near ball. Yeah. I could do. I could do a thousand. I could do a thousand easily. Yeah, a thousand. I, I, yeah, yeah. Wow, absolutely, a thousand, wow. Ruffy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was, I'm with you, Ruffy. Wow. I'm with you. Wow. You know, I, can only, I, can, I don't want to release an official oh. statement right now, but I'm as amazed as you with that last line. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wait, 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 Barry hears that. He'll be trying to beat that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ne never mind, uh, never mind, Barry. What about yourself? What about yourself, Robbie? Uh, you oh, no, I've only, I only had one foot, left foot only. You know, I would struggle badly. Uh, I'd have to really yeah. practice on my right, my right foot. But no, no, it's nothing I would never, I would never try. Yeah. But I mean, that is amazing. Absolutely, a thousand. Yeah. Wow. Is that, that so is many? Fantastic. So many a day? Is that so many? No, no, yeah. <laughs> <That's a point. laughs> I know exactly. Can, I, can uh, keep, I can keep the ball up all day. Yeah. No ball. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you just couldn't pick a pass. Um, I, I, anyway, uh, apart from anything else, I, I, I have to tell you. No, I was going to say, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to tell you a quick, a, a quick wee story. Uh, hey, was going, was, Ruffy, uh, suddenly, no, no, for the after story. dinner just, second. Keep it up. No, no. <laughs> no, it was a keep it up. It was a keep it up story. And I was down in the... Uh, Sucky Hall Street, and I don't know if you've seen the boy, you know the boy that does it professionally, you know the boy that yes. keeps the ball up, and, and he can do it, yeah. flick it, you know. The freestyle. Ah, and he can do it round, and uh, the yeah. Celtic we get supporters the were, the Celtic supporters were their own their way to Parkhead <laughs> for the game, and obviously they were all, this old boy in the Celtic, uh, Tommy was standing watching him for about 10 minutes, and the boy was absolutely amazing, and just before he went away, he leaned out to the boy and tapped his shoulder, he went, I'm sorry, son, but it's goals that count. <laughs> yeah, how, to, how to absolutely deflate him. Uh, I can tell you, by the way, um, Ruffy, your nice little message to um, uh, Michael has made him over the moon. His dad is well happy ah, with it. Great. So uh, just, just out of curiosity, uh, Tom, could you run a marathon? Oh, no, I, I, I hated long distance running, Peter. I don't know about you or, or yeah. Ruffy. I... I I was a sprinter, I was a 100 metre, 80 metre, you know, I, I hated the marathon. Four marathons. Four marathons, wow. It's incredible, isn't it? They've, they've, um, I know, I can't believe it myself. Did the floodlights it's... on for you when you finish? Uh, the last one they did. The, the first three, no. <laughs> the last one. The last one was pain. The last one was the worst ever. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know why. Did you, and, yeah, do you know why I, and do you know why I had to do that marathon? Do you know why? I had no. to do it because Barry said he was doing it and then suddenly took the Kelty job and I had to fill in for him, you know. Oh. So it wasn't oh. good. I wish I'd never said yes to it with not, oh, not enough no. training. Anyway, what about this, Tam? This is just before you go, guys. You happy with that, Tam? You oh. happy with that one? Is that, the, is, so, is that the 1990? Yes, well done, Tam. That's the 1990. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a good nick, Ruffy, isn't it? You, Oh, that's fantastic! Oh, that's a cracker! Oh, super! Who I did like... you who did you get that offer? 
I who donated what? that? I, 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 sh shut up, you will you? Um, anyway, <laughs> apart from anything else, uh, yeah, it looks the absolute berries, doesn't it? So I just thought I like to bring in a wee bit of memorabilia every now and then. Tom just keeps us all going. Uh, I mean, I'm opening up uh, photographs and. And people are obviously sending us stuff as well. It just keeps us all going because we're still waiting for Nicola to say, out, we can play doubles, Ruffy. And then yes. McManus and Ferguson are getting scattered all over the place. Just out of curiosity, Ruffy, before we go, do you think they'll get a game? Do you think they'll get a game? You know, do you think they'll well, get I don't, one I, game? I don't know, I don't know what, what level you know, they're at, but if they aren't at any level at all, I don't think they'll get a game. How, how, how oh. do you know me and Barry have not been practising? Well, I, I, well, I hope you something. We're, 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 we're hoping you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just yeah. bat on the ball about the living room. <laughs> hey, oi, 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 needs a war. Yeah, absolutely. Oi, needs a war. Tom. Forehand, backhand, exactly working in the serve. Yeah. yeah. Tom. You're absolutely oh. right, son. You're absolutely 100% right. Listen, I'm going to let you go out for golf with uh, the, the mate that you uh, bought off the internet. Uh, and Ruffy and I will <laughs> actually go and watch the footy like true, real, real, real people, <laughs> real football fans. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks to David uh, Winnie for joining us on the programme. To Ruffy, Tam, uh, and myself, Peter Martin. Don't forget, you can like, share and follow us on Facebook. We really appreciate it. The figures are magnificent um, through lockdown uh, and before that as well. And and also uh, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love to have you on board joining the football family where, believe me, the majority of people on here love their club and speak passionately and informed about it. So join us if you can. And from everyone here, thank you for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.